Hello again, friends. Uh, today I've got a video on another sub-project for this Harris 1 kilowatt station here in my shack. This video is on the Harris RF3466A HF Universal Modem. This was quite the project and took countless dozens of hours to work it out, but I think I finally got it licked. The RF3466A is essentially a sophisticated TU or terminal unit allowing the integration of certain digital operation operating modes into an HF station. The modem supports three basic waveforms and some combinations of these waveforms. The waveforms are 39 tone mode, robust serial mode, and uh, fairly standard audio frequency shift keying, or RIDI as the amateurs call it, or RAT as the military uh, people call it. I won't go into all three modes here today and the range of capabilities of this unit because they are quite beyond what we could hope to cover in a video. However, I will focus on getting the FSK uh, worked out and functioning for uh, amateur RIDI. The unit is designed to take audio input from a receiver, for example, uh, where the audio contains a keying waveform such as RIDI FSK and convert this into a serial series of bits uh, for connection to a computer or other digital equipment, such as digital voice converters or facsimile machines, etc. Likewise, the unit will take input, uh, it will take serial uh, input of uh, data from these digital devices and modulate them to uh, the configuration of the selected waveform and uh, send that waveform, modulated waveform, out as audio. Uh, for use either in a transmitter or a telephone circuit, uh, etc. But in this case, more tip most typically, a transmitter. The unit has two completely independent modulators and demodulators, allowing either two independent communication channels, or the two channels can be combined for diversity operations, uh, either fre uh, frequency or space diversity. Uh, the concept of diversity being that um, if you can send the, send the same information out in two different ways, uh, then a receiving station has the best opportunity if, uh, to receive a signal uh, in, in its whole. For serial communications, this uh, unit can be configured for RS-232 or other standards such as the MIL standard 188C. But we'll, today we'll focus on the RS-232 as that's what's most commonly available on people's uh, computers and laptops. Okay, so uh, let's look at the rear panel and begin to formulate a strategy to get, that connect, to get this connected up into our station. So let's look at the, the rear panel here. The top connector, J1, is a standard DB25 uh, serial port, uh, very standard. J3 and J4 are marked as transceiver ports and both use a DB15 or more accurately a DA15 connector. The J3 is a female connector and the J4 is a male connector. They're both marked as transceiver and we'll, we'll discuss that in a little bit more detail. Uh, and so now let's, let's just take a quick look at the, uh, the signals that are, that are present on these conductors, connectors. Okay, here is a picture of... Um, the, uh, the, the signals on the J1 port uh, is a very standard serial, uh, but take notice of the use of the RTS and CTS signals. These are the request to send and clear to send handshake signals. These signals are used to coordinate when the data terminal has data it wants to send. Uh, it, it alerts the modem that there is data to be sent, and the other way around, when the unit has received, when the modem has received data, uh, it alerts the, the computer. These, these handshake signals are a real pain in the neck and, on, and there are many configurations that are supported. Finding the right set of parameters uh, was difficult and, and a big part of this project. Uh, and coordinating uh, all of the handshaking from uh, the, end, the user interface all the way through to the terminal and all the options and then getting it to key the transmitter properly and oh, it, it was a lot of work. Um, but, uh, but so far we've done okay. I'll also note that this is a 25 pin connector and it makes use of a lot of the other pins beyond what you see here. Uh, specifically because it is a two channel device, it has a second set of RX, TX, ground, well, maybe not the ground, but RX, TX, 
uh, clear to send, request to send. It's got a whole second set of secondary uh, serial channel here, but uh, we're not going to be using that. Okay, so now let's look at the transceiver and audio ports uh, that are actually going to be connecting to the receivers and the transmitters. Here's J3. Uh, for audio signals, this system uses a standard 600 ohm balanced audio with a nominal level of 0 dBm into 600 ohms, which is uh, basically 1 milliwatt into uh, 600 ohms. More on this uh, later. You'll notice that there are three audio lines channel A to transmitter, channel B to transmitter, and channel A from receiver. You'll also notice two key lines A and B and key line common, which is a ground, uh, and, R and RX receiver mute lines. If you saw my previous video, I've already integrated the mute signals from the exciter to the receiver, so I won't need to reuse these mute lines because once the exciter is keyed up, uh, it mutes uh, automatically regardless of this modem. This connector, J3, is the one to be used if you have two transmitters or two transmitter sites. As you can see, channel A and channel B out to the transmitters. Uh, and here's a, here's a diagram uh, from the manual. Here you can see the system being used with two separate transmitters. Again, this is typically done to transmit the same intelligence uh, on different frequencies, one on each transmitter. The benefit of this is a message can be transmitted on, for example, two totally different HF bands, allowing a much better chance of receiving the message if propagation is better or worse on these two different frequencies. Um, this, one this is one example of frequency diversity, meaning different frequencies. Um, and uh, on the receiving end, a, a well-equipped station could actually combine received signals from those two different frequencies, from those two different transmitters, to uh, reproduce the best quality signal as possible. Of course, something like this is only permitted in licensed commercial or military installations and not amateur stations. And you'll notice that channel A audio is going to transmitter A, channel B audio is going to transmitter B, and they both need key lines uh, to initiate the transmission of the waveform. Okay, so now let's look at J4. Okay, J4 is very similar to J3. You will see two audio channels, but this time channel A from receiver and channel B from receiver, and one audio out to transmitter B. This connector is clearly intended for a diversity receiver site, so let's take a look at it. Very similar to the other diagram, but this time we're using two receivers, and instead of key lines, we're muting them both when the system is transmitting. Now, I have no intentions of using two transmitters for the purposes of transmitting RIDI, However, there could be some benefit of building up this system to allow a second receiver. The usage for this is, as an amateur would be, for example, two receivers on the same frequency but using two different antennas, maybe one a horizontal and one a loop. By setting up this modem for diversity reception, the system will determine which channel A or B from which receiver A or B and thus which antenna A or B has the best signal-to-noise ratio and use that channel, or uh, combine them uh, to get an overall improved signal-to-noise ratio. This could help protect against things such as QSB, selective fading, uh, or just you know bad uh, conditions where one antenna uh, ends up uh, favoring uh, is favored rather than the other. Another potential use of diversity reception is I could choose to use one receiver for channel A input and I can choose any number of web-based software-defined radios or SDRs as the audio to channel B. And again, the system will use the best of the two signals given at any, at any given moment. So armed with this understanding of the audio connections, keying, and muting necessary, I set out to design my interface. Knowing I had, two, had to source two DB15s, one male and one female, and given the dread I have of making up uh, these connectors and, and doing a whole bunch of soldering wires on very, in this very small space, I decided to locate a pre-built cable uh, and found this one on Amazon. Definitely not the cheapest uh, I, I, out there, but considering the hours of soldering uh, and shrink and uh, wire, uh, you know, uh, shrink tubing, it would save me. I, I thought I'd splurge on it. I took this cable and I cut it in half, one for J3 and one for J4, 
then stripped out off, stripped off a few inches of the outer jacket to review the conductors inside. The, the nice thing about this cable is it has one male and one female exactly what I need. So I could just cut it in half and go from there. The next thing I did was to buzz out each pin and the associated color of the conductor within the cable and make this map uh, in Excel um, to create this reference. So pin one on the connector would be associated with, with each signal on the J3 and J4. I just made this, this map and, uh, to do that. Uh, this is a component of my documentation to keep everything straight uh, and just helps uh, put everything together much, easy, much more easily. If, you, if you've seen some of my other videos, uh, you know I like to create these rear panels uh, as the interface to these devices, to the outside world and the rest of the system. So the next part of this plan was to create uh, a wiring, a, a diagram for the rear panel. Um, as you can see here, I have an, a channel A input using a female XLR, a channel A output using a male XLR, and these are the basic audio lines that I'll be using. And of course, while I'm doing all of this, one more pair of wires for the, the channel B input, now is the time to do it. And this will allow me, if I want to, to play with diversity reception uh, as opposed to having to take this all apart and redo it so at some point in the future. You'll also notice two key, line, two key lines connectors uh, as my standard here in the shack using RJ45 and two of them. So I always have one open available key lines jack for other equipment. Uh, and there will be one more RJ45 for the RS-232 lines. And you'll see that I map out each connector and where the signals go, either J3 or J4, and which specific pins on those connectors and which color wires uh, those represent on the DB15 cable. This just makes assembling the panel much easier and mostly error-free, uh, although not always perfectly. And here is the finished panel with all six jacks um, and showing also the two DB15 uh, cables and connectors. So you can see uh, channel A audio in from the receiver, channel A audio out to the transmitter, audio B in for the diversity use case, uh, and then two key line jacks and one RS-232 jack for the final computer interconnection. Yeah, and now a, uh, a view of the rear of the panel. Just a few things to note here. First is the very colorful conductors from the Amazon DB15 cable that I've cut in half. And you'll see that I, um, I, I pulled aside any unused conductors. I, I try never to cut them because you never know in the future when uh, you might want to use one of those conductors. And if you've cut it short, you're sort of left uh, SOL. And then also uh, note the strain relief on the left side. This is important too, especially when you're doing uh, projects for the first time and you're moving them in and out of racks and a lot of movement. Uh, you really could break these rather fragile um, conductors pretty easily. And a little close up, uh, you'll, you'll, the other thing to note is that all seven key lines are bridged from one jack to the other, while only two of the lines are actually used from this key setup into the DB15 cables and therefore into the modem. The purpose here, as in other projects, is to make a bus for all seven key lines that I've brought out from the exciter for many possible purposes, uh, purposes unknown possibly now, uh, that may be useful in the future. And, um, you know, uh, uh, certain pieces of equipment will use certain of these key lines here and there, whether it's mute, whether it's the, certainly the ground, whether it's key line in, key line out, push to talk, CW, etc. Okay, so now that I've wired, finally wired everything up, uh, I can proceed and begin to learn about getting this set up working, uh, or so I thought. Okay, so I immediately ran into two problems here. The first is that there is no code translation capabilities in this unit. So all our computers use ASCII characters, code, but the amateur RIDI for the most part uses Bordeaux, uh, or more accurately, the ITA5 code. One is a, one is a seven bit code, the other is a five bit code, uh, and without, without uh, code translation feature in the modem, the data wa if the data was coming in as Bordeaux, then the data going out with, uh, to the computer would also be Bordeaux. 
And uh, a, st a standard PC with a serial terminal program would not be able to display Bordeaux data, nor would it be able to send the data uh, correctly. It would be sending ASCII instead of Bordeaux. So that's the first problem. The second problem I ran into was the signaling rate. RIDI in the U.S. operates at 45.45 baud, also known as 60 words per minute. Computers and laptops these days are no longer made with serial ports, so we uh, are forced to rely on these serial to USB adapters that you may have seen. Uh, and the problem is these rarely, maybe never, support such low data rate as 45 baud. The one I have, which is considered a decent one, uh, only goes down to 110 baud. And so that uh, clearly wouldn't work either. And so I was really struggling to figure out how am I going to solve these problems? Uh, and then I remembered I had a little device that I bought off eBay at least 10 years ago uh, somewhere in the house. And of course, finding it was no easy task, but I found it. Okay, so this is a, a device from a company called Black Box. This company has a long history in, in the communications field, uh, data communications, uh, going back a long time. I, I don't know exactly how far, but they are you know, very well respected. All sort of unique products, interesting products, and, and unfortunately fairly expensive. Uh, luckily, this box came off of eBay. I don't know what I paid for it, but I'm sure I didn't pay 50 bucks. Maybe it was 25, 30 bucks on it. And this device is called a CAP, or Communications Adapter Plus. And it's designed to adapt and interconnect otherwise incompatible devices. So I had never actually powered this up in all the years I had it, and I had no idea if it worked, let alone how it worked. Um, but at least according to the brochure and a manual that came with it, and a manual I found online, it was very hope uh, I was very hopeful that it could do what I needed to do. Uh, feel free to pause the video here if you want to read uh, the details uh, uh, here. But uh, specifically, it is designed to interface two devices for different speeds. Speeds from 45.45 baud, which is what I need, up to 38.4 thousand baud or kilobaud. And also translate between different codes. For example, ASCII and Bordeaux. And it does this in both directions, uh, as well as handling other codes like EBCDIC used in mainframes, etc. For speed differences, you know, uh, you can easily overrun, a, a faster machine could easily overrun a slower machine. So it also has a 32 kilobyte buffer that can be allocated to either of the two units in differing amounts. You can do half and half, you can do a quarter, three quarters, or an eight, seven eighths. It's very clever the way that they do it, um, and, it and, and, and it's very interesting. So this all sounds great, and uh, so I, I thus began the, uh, the journey to try to figure out does this thing work? Can I get it to work? Uh, all of the parameters that need to get set and uh, a handshaking and, and everything. It was quite the, the big journey. And so uh, at this point, I think I will leave it here for this first part of this video. And uh, next week, I hope to make a second part going more into detail on how I got this working and how it all ended up working in the transmitter. Thanks.